Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Todd Cochran, and you're listening to the Saturday Morning Tech Show, or the Morning Tech Show, whatever way we want to call it. I, I think I call it three or four different things at times. And uh, I want to welcome you. I know it's uh, some of you, it's not morning anymore. It's after lunchtime on the, uh, on the East Coast, but it's uh, a chipper 7 a.m. here in Honolulu. 75 degrees, uh, so we're, we're enjoying uh, uh, our winter as well for having a little off temperature. So I'm not even going to ask you guys what temperature is in your locations, but uh, <laughs> uh, Bill, we got Bill, uh, Dr. Bill from drbill.tv up on top. Bill, welcome to welcome to the show this morning. How are you? Oh, doing fine. And uh, I, what part of the country are you in? I'm not even I'm not even familiar, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm in High Point, North Carolina, which is kind of central North Carolina. We've uh, we've had some pretty cold days lately, but uh, today it's actually a uh, a nice warm 65 degrees so <laughs> that, unusual for us this time of year that's nice and on the bottom i've got uh, norbert from totally cool tech at totally cool tech.com norbert good morning how are you good morning doing great as a matter of fact it's actually a, a kind of a nice day out here yesterday we had uh, a lot of rain and there was a lot of rain in uh, california here for about uh, four or five days so it's nice to have a nice sunny day yeah you guys yeah you actually you guys aren't where it's well i heard it's warming up on the east coast but uh i think it's about uh five thousand degrees in washington dc they're going through all their uh budget shenanigans right now so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wouldn't want to be there right now no and i just i was kind of watching facebook last night a little bit and i was you know it's it's really interesting to kind of watch the the diverse opinions and uh um after i got my tax bill earlier in the week i was like uh cut them baby just cut 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 and get rid of a bunch of this stuff because it, it's a little bit ridiculous but we're not here to talk politics or money we're here to talk tech and uh is this the first time you guys have been on this show right it yeah. is for me and I, I try to you know i've been having uh some regular guests on and uh I love Rob and I love Andy and Jeff and those guys, but uh, I thought this week let's go ahead and flip it around a little bit and get some <clears throat> some new opinions in here and give these guys a break in the morning. But I, the way I kind of work this is I go through, I've, I pick some stuff from the week that is, well, what I consider probably the top stuff. And, you know, I've I've commented on some of it already, and you guys probably already have as well on your own shows. But um, I think the hottest thing that I saw this week from a, from a net perspective, of course, was the, um, let's see here, we got to push a button here, or else, yeah, well, I'll take care of it when it comes up, was the 30% <laughs> yeah. thing by Apple, you know, and, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I don't know, the, it's been kind of curious that there hasn't been more outrage, but I know, I don't know. Well, you know, you guys, I know both, I think both of you guys actually work uh, regular JLBs as well. You know, what would be, you know, can you imagine someone coming into your boss and saying, hey, you know, your your building's on this, uh, on my sidewalk, and because it's sitting on uh, sitting on my right away, you're going to give me 30%. That's just like the mob walking in and, yeah, and, and saying, I agree. you know, I agree. that's exactly it, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically protection money. <laughs> You're going to pay up. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, well, it's uh, kind of a pay to play. You, you want to play on yeah. our, our court, you're going to have to pay us. You know, why Why Apple has to do that, I don't know. They've, they've got such a great thing going. Uh, what is it about this that uh, they want to make that much more money? I mean, I understand, you know, money's good. Money's, you know, greed is good. That's, uh, you know, the Wall Street thing. Um but I think, you know, for developers, this can really hurt them. A lot of these developers are smaller developers. They don't have a lot of money. And whatever they can get off of their, their apps is uh, their livelihood. Yeah, and, yeah, and, it, go ahead. and what, what amazes me, too, is somebody like a Netflix. Netflix develops an app. They sell the app. They're already taking 30% of, of that. And then they turn around and say, oh, and that, by the way, we're now going to take 30% of your subscriptions that come through the system. I mean – are they changing the deal? Uh, you know, it reminds me of Darth Vader, you know, pray I do not change it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I just, you know, you know, I, I understand the, um, you know, taking a commission model. You know, we work with our oh, podcasters. Yeah. We take 30%. But 
we work for it. We do something for that 30%. We, you know, we, in, and it's business that I bring to someone that they would not have otherwise. Now that's, that's the adage that Apple is using, but they're really, you know, all they're, they're bringing the platform, but they're not bringing that person. They're not, they're not promoting those, you know, yeah, if your app sells well, you get uh, in the top 10, but, uh, Man, oh man, I know you, you look at it from two or three different ways. I understand why it's so lucrative, but but I, it's a two way street, Todd. Yeah, yeah, you it know, is. It is. Apple has created this. Here's here's this this road, this this freeway. Yep. That we've created for you, and the developers come. They 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 build on top of that. They add things to it, which only benefits Apple because now everybody wants to drive down that road. Well, you're going to need to get one of these things. It's an Apple branded product. And you're going to use it, you know. It, it it helps Apple. They should be. I understand getting some money, possibly getting something out of it, but I think they're going a little bit heavy on this. Thirty uh, percent is just way too much. Yeah, and it's 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 a little bit scary um, to think that if they do it, then who's who's really next in line to say, well, let's let's hold our hands out here and uh, you know say you want to pay to play. Now you know that. That just kind of ties in, not in the same sense. And I got another article that made headlines yesterday was, you know, here you got uh, this extortion effect going on by, and boy, you almost hate to say extortion because, you know, you Google lawyers, are, in my opinion, it's extortion. Um, but here we have yesterday, we find, uh, you know, a Twitter client, or actually a company, Twitter suspending Uber Media for privacy, privacy and monetization violations. And and I've always been leery, very, very... You, know, you guys know that, you know, a number of years ago, I was chastised for just basically saying, if you're running FeedBurner on your website, you're, you're an idiot. That's basically... I hate to say it that way, and if you guys are using FeedBurner, don't take it the wrong way, but it basically I, said... I actually remember that. I remember, I remember your uh, well, campaign, we, I guess it was. We uh, lost... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I think we lost Dr. Bill. Yeah, we did. I remember your campaign about it, and it, it wasn't so much, I think, Todd, that you you were saying that fee burner is yeah. the ultimate evil, um, but it was more like, hey, you know, you can do this on your own. It's really not that hard, and don't let someone take something away from you that's yours. Right. Keep it in your own control. And another thing, too, is it was all about this, you know, you working within someone else's infrastructure. And whether or not that infrastructure is world class or whether or not it's it's not, you you know, you have to basically jump to their you know, jump to their bandwagon. Whenever they say change something, you have to change it. Now, you know, it's worked out for most people. Some people that are using Feedburner are happy with it and they've used it for years and it's been fine. But then you have the situation with Twitter and you have this great you know, this great uh, way to communicate and send information out. And we're all using Twitter clients of one form or another. And this ecosystem gets built up around it. You know, I just, just like the API, you know, their API allowed uh, folks to build applications. And, you know, they set up some guidelines, of course. And even at Raw Voice, I've got guidelines on our API. And we don't have a huge API, but we have a mini API. And... But then Twitter tells Uber Media, hey, you know, it's uh, you're doing something wrong. We're going to pull the plug on you. And they did. So what this is what Twitter told Bill Gross, the founder and CEO of Uber Media, told him, t Twitter told him that they suspended their applications for three reasons. T Twitter said that in Uber Tweeter and Twidroid, we use a tweet, a log nation service, uh, the service called TMI.me. It allows people to write up more than 140 characters. He says, uh, well, we suspended this. He said, number two, Twitter said that Uber Current, oh, Twitter said that in Uber Current, we changed links that are part of affiliate program to be our own links. And he said, we didn't do this, but we moved all changing of links to eliminating possibility of this. Number three, Twitter said that they would like us to change the name of Uber Twitter. And we uh, had to change the name to Uber Social immediately. So they said as soon as you make those changes, you, you, you can come back to the ecosystem. So I would be scared to death if I had a business model 
that had anything to do with uh, with Twitter because you're not playing exactly by the way they want you to play, and they're gonna they're gonna pull the plug in. And you know what was the weird thing about this was there was a great article on one website that apparently during that day they were advertising their own as a as a promoted um link on twitter.com they were promoting their own client yeah they were twitter ran the promoted tweet twitter mobile can you believe that so don't tell me that wasn't a coincidence no yeah. i think um what it is is twitter they uh, probably for a long time had a a problem getting you know what's what's going to be their real monetization form how they're going to make this thing work and now that everyone else is able to do something with that because the popularity of Twitter, I mean, they're basically riding the coattails. Uh, Twitter doesn't like it, you know, and because they're not getting a piece of it. And you might see them do something like Apple. Hey, you want to do our thing? You're going to have to pay. So I'd hate to see it come to that because I think that's kind of protection money. I don't know if you want to call it racketing, whatever, but uh, it just doesn't seem fair. There needs to be some sort of give and take, you know, some sort of equality on that. But uh, like you said, if you base your your business model off of someone else's business model, you're at their mercy. I think Dr. Bill's having challenges staying hooked up today. He, he we we lost him again. You know, it's true. If you build your business strategy upon someone else's business, uh, you, you know, stand by. You're going to get what you get. I I just you know if, if you don't if you don't work along with them and make your your business model. A, a an added feature to the other business it, you, you know you run the risk of that other business that you're working with changing and saying now we want that we're going to get rid of you unless you come up with some sort of mutual agreement between the two uh it, there's always that risk um don't put all your eggs in one basket and and dr bill i know you're having trouble staying connected what yeah uh, what's your i don't know i don't know what it is i um I, I lost my connection, but I was still hearing you, so I had to break the call and, and come yeah, back the, in. Yeah, it was like the video um, dropped or something. That was weird, but, you know. Yeah, what, it's kind of weird. What's your thoughts but, on the whole Twitter? Well, what I'm thinking is is just like um, just like Apple, part of their deal with what they said about getting the 30%, even from the subscription revenue and all that, one of the other things they threw in there that, that we haven't mentioned yet is that uh, if you have a show and you have some uh, – third-party link let's say you want to sell a book through audible.com right. or whatever they don't permit that either uh and as you know the the real challenge that we've got as as podcasters is monetizing uh the effort that we put into the programs and they're basically cutting off they're not only taking revenue they're also cutting off revenue so it seems to me to be high-handed all the way around uh and they're the big dog. They make the rules, but it's just not fair to the little guy. And uh, when you run a network, and I, th I know this is true both of radio, television, uh, the key is the content. And if the content's not there, if there's nothing interesting to watch or interesting to listen to, uh, then they lose their business, no matter how big they are. So you can't keep hurting, in effect, the hand that feeds you. You know, another thing, too, you know, and we're, we're swapping back and forth between topics here is that when Apple made this announcement, they said, okay, Todd, if you're selling a premium subscription to some of your content for 10 bucks on your website, you have to sell that premium content subscription for $10 on the Apple Store. You can't charge 13 for it. You can't uh, make it so attractive that people just go over to geeknewcentral.com and click the purchase button there. So you know, then what do you do? Do you raise the prices on your website because of one greedy customer, you know, one greedy site like Apple, you know, businesses, normal businesses, the digital business is a little different because the margins are different on digitally delivered content. Really what you're paying for is you're paying for this. You're paying for the work, for the talent. Um, the real cost of the delivery is very minimal when it comes to a digital product. Um, but it isn't unsubstantial, um, especially when you're talking about streaming radio. But let's talk about this show. We're going to talk here for 60 to 90 minutes. 
and um, the cost of delivering this media will be uh, on a rough order of five or six cents per person that actually watches the video um, after we're done. And that's substantial money. And I, you know, we're not running a sponsor on this show. So, you know, I take this one in the shorts, but it was, you know, it's a show that I'm continuing to build up. So, but what do you do when you are already beholden to someone? Let's say, for example, that we ran an ad in this show and um, I have to give you guys a cut of that money and I have to, you know, who I'm brokering through probably takes a commission. There's only so many times you can cut the pie before there's no money left. And I can guarantee right. you most companies don't work on 30% margins. If if people, if companies worked on 30% margins, it was, you know, jeez, I wish I could work on 30% margins all the time. That would be nice. Uh, I work in my day job is contracting. I work for a general contractor. Our profit is anywhere from three to maybe five, maybe if you're lucky, seven percent. That and that's pretty good in general contracting. You know, yeah, we're talking, you know, anywhere from hundreds of thousands to maybe millions of dollars. But there's a lot of expenditure, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we pay out a lot to we 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 have that pie that we have to divvy up. So well, while the owner's paying X amount, you know, we get this little sliver, but we do a lot of work for it, and uh, our profit is very small. So, you know, for podcasters or uh, app developers, it doesn't matter. You know, you put a lot of time and money in there too, uh, and to give away 30% to somebody who's just providing nothing but the highway, so to speak, and and and, and okay, maybe some uh, advertising and uh, uh, ability for distribution. I think that's a, just a bit huge for anybody to have to deal with. You know, I think it, uh, you know, I guess the kind of the way I look at this is, um, you know, Google announced that they're going to come out with a 90-10. Uh, In other words, you keep 90%, they keep 10%. And you figure that a normal credit card processing transaction fee, if, well, if you're doing the volume that Google's doing, you're probably paying 2% or less. And uh, maybe even better than that, knowing that, the amount of money that they're running, but, <coughs> um, you know, that's a reasonable, you know, 10%. Okay. I mean, that, that's, you know, that might be workable to, uh, to do that for, you know, depends on how much service you're providing me too. So, uh, you know, it's just one of these things that is, uh, I think it's going to end up being in court. I think it's, uh, I don't know if they've got any, you know, the wall street journal said they had an antitrust law potential, but, uh, the, that, that's what I see. I, I well, think this is going to be something like what was happening to Microsoft back in uh, the early 90s. You know, Department of Justice and uh, what is it? The, the European countries were going after them for, you know, being the big boy on the on the on the block and not letting anybody else play. Um, Apple's kind of put themselves in that position as well, and who knows what's going to happen? I think I think if they keep on this little path that they've been on here recently. It could lead them right into that, you know. American public is is you know we're we're tight with money, right now. It's very very uh, a very hot topic, and why not take that to your legislature and let them go ahead and hit up Apple? They're yeah. doing great, you yeah. know. In this economy. yeah, if we don't push back, then they're just going to keep it up. Well, speaking of pushing back, you know, no one's pushing back, and well, Pandora did. Pandora's basically said, or whoever it was that. Rhapsody or whoever it was that came out and said that, that we can't do this. This is not going to work. You know, we already have to pay the RIAA money. We have to pay ASCAP. We have to pay BMI. The copyright uh, office several years ago set the rates. Those are fixed rates for us. It costs us so much an hour to stream the service. Um, we do, you know, they work on a, on a, you know, some are going to use the service more than others. It's just like, you know, it's not like uh, Sirius or or XM where, you know, they're basically, they have fixed cost and satellite time and or their satellites are so much to get up there and really delivering it costs them nothing. It's not that at all. It's, uh, it's a different situation here. So, you know, those music streaming services have per hour cost that is assigned to a customer and they just pray that most people don't use it over their allotted time and burn that cash through. It's just like Ustream, you know, they're running ads on their service today and I'm sure when a thousand viewers get on a channel and they people run uh you know for uh 
a couple of hours, that costs them money because they, they can't sell enough advertising against it. So, you know, between Apple in their control and basically saying pay us or else and the folks at Twitter basically saying we are going to you play by our rules or we're going to cut you out, you know, it's just uh, it's it's a little bit disturbing on where we could be heading. Um, I love this uh, particular graphic here, and I think you guys will, will get a kick out of it. Let me uh, flip this here. Let me take this down. Twitter, love you, man, but, uh, you know, look, you see what's that there? It's, it's a crown. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what's been happening uh, in the world these days. A bunch of crowns have been uh, have been uh, usurped. They've been uh, removed, and uh, you know. So are, are they next? It, you know, he says uh, this is quite the. If, if you haven't read this, it's both sides of the table dot com. Um, man, oh man, he just takes it to him. But the fanboys. I was reading some of the stuff on one of the uh, a popular website and. <laughs> they were they were not um how should I put it? Um well the fanboys were all they can do whatever they want to do. So boy, I tell you, yeah. I think uh, Bill's I don't know what's going on. Bill, I you your connection I don't know if we've got a bad internet connection or what, but uh I'm sorry. And about normally I have a really good connection. I've got uh uh, 20 down and, and one up, and, and normally it works real well, but it seems like it freezes every so often here. I don't know what's happening. And it's, it's odd. I have no idea. And that's the first I've seen that happen. Hey, let me talk. Let's move off topic here, and let's go talk about the U.S. government a little bit. And uh, <laughs> last the U.S. government's been seizing domain names uh, like crazy. They've been shutting down sites that have been selling you know, all types of goods, um, largely because they don't want to, uh, oops, let's see if I do this right. Okay. Largely because, uh, you know, people are doing illegal stuff. But last weekend, they see 14 sites, and one of them was a DNS service, and it nice. caused 84,000 websites to have wow. this warning pop up. Now, imagine, you wake, you know, you, you slept all night. <laughs> You get up and get your coffee. You come to the office in the morning and you load your website. And for hours and hours, people have been loading this website. And this is what it says. This domain has been seized by ICE, Homeland Security Investigation, pursuant to a seizure warrant issued by the United States District Court under authority of title blah, blah, blah. And it goes on to say, advertisement, distribution, transportation, receipt, and possession of child porn constitutes oh, federal crimes that carry penalties oh, that first-time offenders of up to 30 years in prison, a $250,000 fine, for forfeiture, and restitutions. Now imagine that's your website, that's your business, that's your family site, that uh, I'd have... So court. basically I, they kicked in the wrong door? They kicked in the wrong door. And it took 84,000 websites offline for as much as three or four days. I wonder how many websites were actually the ones they were looking for versus... Uh, 14. Uh, they were looking for 14, and they took 14, down 84,000. And they got 84,000. And they got 84,000. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's not a good record. That's really bad. I mean, that, that's, that's some serious collateral damage there. You know, Does that mean that those websites have a basis for slander charges? I mean, can you sue the could government? They take them to court? I don't know. Can you sue the it government? It would be a real rough uphill battle. It yeah, would be I a real rough so. uphill battle. And what they were doing was it was Operation Save Our Child, and they were seizing domains that were obviously doing stuff that, you know, probably des you know these people probably deserve to be in jail or whatever. I mean, again, you're you know innocent until you're proven guilty in this country, supposedly. So, um, but doesn't mean they can't put you in in jail for detention. Right, right. Checking but, you out, but I mean, I I can see that you know it was done for good reasons. I mean, they they weren't just going, hey, we didn't like you, we're going to take you down. They were going for something legitimate and probably something very well needed to be done. Um, but yeah, you know, in their haste, they failed to check to see what else could go wrong. 
Well, and in, that, that's that's not good. And actually, the, one of the domains they took down was incorrect. It, it, it was in actually the the uh, server, and probably what it was is was that the server was probably a DNS server for one of these sites, and but it got uh, it got pulled. It was part of the free DNS um, system, and that was that's pretty scary. I don't know if you guys have used free DNS at all, but it was off no. of one specific server. It was free DNS um, that got pulled off one of their particular servers but you know it's you know that would be i i just i just can't imagine because someone's going to see that and immediately you're you're guilty and some big banner like that pops up on your website i don't care what kind of a damage control you're going to do it's um you know people are always going to wonder hmm who are they associated with but at the same time let's just talk a little bit about these domain seizures they've done it on valentine's day they did it right before thanksgiving um, they've been seizing sites that have been selling a, a, a purportedly like uh, Tiffany bat, uh, Tiffany jewelry, and Louis Vuitton, and you know all these high-end muck muck uh products and services. And um, but here, just think about the ability. And there's really they're trying to figure out what law gives them the right to come in and just take these sites down. You know, normally you served a search warrant and you, you file an injunction and normally you go to court and you get your day in court and the judge says, yes, take her down. But they just seize these things and these owners are, you know, left to wonder what to do. I'm sure if the if these are sites that the government is legitimately taking down, you know, for a legitimate reason, then these probably these guys don't protest too much. Uh, but uh, I can't imagine the damage it would be done as a business owner or even a brand owner. But 84,000 websites. And on the scheme of things, it's not a lot unless it's yours. But, you know, it could be. I mean, it could be, you know, something for maybe it's a school's on there somehow or, you know, maybe a private school. Uh, Maybe an organization that does some good charity work. You're taking these things down. And not only that, you're now associating it with something that, I mean, is – the ultimate taboo, child porn. I mean, that is just something that nobody ever wants to be associated with. Yeah. And, and if ever you heard anybody in your neighborhood, you know, much less your business community is associated with that, you know, it really hits home. Um, and it's the ultimate negativity. I mean, how do you, how do you dig yourself out of that hole? You know, it's almost, it almost becomes like the, the Salem witch hunt. Not that they were trying to get these people but you know accidentally they've done it and how do you how do you go back and and unring that bell you can't do it yeah there's there's just no way to unring it so oh man man we're just about the time i want to ask bill something we we, he, <laughs> we, we he, his video goes south that's i have no idea what's going on but <laughs> you you're basically we could hear you, bill. yeah we could hear you laughing at the same time so you know, Bill, what to... Uh, I lose the signal, and uh, yeah. that's the thing. I can still hear you guys. Let's, let's, just the video goes video out. video goes so. crap. What, uh, you know, what's your thought on this whole seizure? Got to keep the mouse moving there, Dr. Bill. <laughs> yeah, maybe I guess. That's maybe that's it. I got to keep keep something moving. Uh, well, it's it's really guilt, the ultimate guilt by association from, from my perspective. I mean, um, one of the things I like about you guys at Raw Voice is, is the... Uh, the criteria to be on te- uh, techpodcast.com is that it be clean. Right. Uh, and I really appreciate that because, uh, you know, I, I absolutely make try to make sure that anybody can watch our podcast and netcast. And I have a lot of people say, uh, I watch you and I watch you with my kids. And uh, if they, if a parent that normally watches my show were to come see that up on my uh, screen when they hit my site, <laughs> you can guarantee they're not coming back. Yep. So uh, that's the kind of thing that I don't know how you fight it. You know, it's, it's kind of like Norbert was saying. What do you do? You don't unring that bell. Um, so I, I think they've got to be a lot more careful. If they're after 14 sites and they hit 84,000 and the rest of those were incorrect, then, you know, it's more than just saying, oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, how do, you, how do you do that? I mean, the government, that's all they'll say. If you even get that out of them, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, from what you were saying, Todd, it sounded like it was happening around holidays. So it sounds like they had maybe like not even the B team, like they had the C team doing this, <laughs> you know, letting the intern go ahead and flip the switch on whatever it was they're doing. Um, but yeah, once once that tag is is on you, 
that's it. It, it, it doesn't go away. It's like a tattoo. You want to r- remove it, you got to burn it off. And it's going to take a lot, and it's going to be painful. Um, it's like someone stealing your identity because yep. that's exactly what happened. Now, Miss Smallbiz yeah. back in the chat room says, doesn't matter if it's 84K or one, point is feds are not giving due process. It's true. You just, you know. Yeah, you're that what, is true. And so, you know, I don't know if it's tied to the Patriot Act or what it's tied to. You know, obviously the Patriot Act is supposed to be catching, you know, the uh, terrorists and stuff. So, you know, I wouldn't, uh, obviously there's a, there's a, there's a word for these people and it's, it's not a pleasant one, but at the same time, you know, I just, I, you just hope you're never on the receiving end of one of these things. But, uh, I, you know, boy, oh boy. And it's, again, it's, it's almost like you're having a, uh, well, it's just, you know, there again, she's put her, I know due process and it's it constitutionally, uh, you know, that I'm sure these folks are not going to defend it because they're, they're, Whatever they're doing, they're not supposed to be doing. But um, all it takes is for them is to take one site down wrong, and I think then the feds will be have a have an issue on their hands with some sort of a court injunction. But um, she's, well, I would it, hope somebody like the Electronic Frontier Foundation or or some of the other organizations that are really there to protect network freedoms would step in and and look into it at least. Yeah, and if nothing else, um, you know, see if it was. Well, I don't know. It, they're, they're, again, you're not. You don't get very popular pro- uh, protecting child porn. Well, no, that's true. And, and it's and this is going to keep happening, and the government is going to be going after sites like this, yeah. and legitimately so. I mean, it is something that does not need to be there, but you're going to have these bits of collateral damage, and what are the acceptable losses here so to speak i mean I, you know i, I, I mean, they're, they're they're going in with almost like a nuclear bomb where they really need a hand grenade and we've it got, just we've, it's easier we've got a legal system let's use it let's use the legal system you know if, if these guys are legitimately doing bad things then you know what does it take it takes a uh, a court serving a court order if they're within the united states you're know, serving a notice and uh, you, you go to court, and uh, hopefully at the same time that you're in court, you get charged and you're arrested at the same time if you're doing this type of stuff, and the court can order an injunction to have the site taken down. Um, but that's what was done with the warrant, wasn't it? I mean, it, it, they, they almost like a grand well, jury. they don't have— Everything was taken there beforehand, it, said, it, you know, they did, these guys are bad, we're going to take them down. It doesn't appear this is done by a warrant, and um, it's just a— um, you know, it's something to do. It says U.S. title. And it, well, we'd have to look this it up. It had to be done by a warrant. There's no other way because that's how they get the, the well, I guess, the ISP or the hosting site or whatever it is to actually take them down. No, they're seizing the domain names. They are not, they're basically seizing, se- seizing the domain names from the Internet. From uh, how they they can't just suck it right off of there. They have to go to they have yeah, to go have to go to some them. sort of yeah. They have to go to somebody. They have to reroute the them. DNS or something. Well, I they're, mean, they're probably got to be some technology behind it. Network Solutions is who they go to for the .dot coms and say, <laughs> you know, you give it up, you know, change the records or whatever they're going to do. So we'll yeah, see. Well, they, yeah, they come in there. Hi, we're the we're the government. You know, you're going to do what we tell you to do, or we're going to shut you down. So you know, what yeah, do you says, do? It says under Title 18. U.S. Code 2254, and we'd have to look that up, <laughs> what the uh, authority is. But it's, again, Homeland Security Investigations, so it's probably something underneath the Patriot Act. Oh, yeah. You can put a lot underneath that yeah. umbrella. Yeah. You know, so let's, let's uh, think about it from the porn situation. They were taking down people that were selling copyrighted material. Okay, so, all right, so that's, that's a topic that uh, is that something that's going to hurt someone and if they don't go – through the week or two week process, and yeah, some companies are going to lose some money. But guess what? That's what the that's what lawsuits are for and recouping damages. Um, you know, so if it's let's say it's the again, they should they're just seizing. I I, don't, I the the difference between say it, stealing copyrighted material versus child porn is huge. Is child porn? There's an actual physical victim. It's 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 not a. Uh, uh, an artwork or something to that effect you know it's not intellectual property it's a physical human being right and that that is legitimate to go ahead and protect uh by doing something immediate like this 
uh, yeah, unfortunately, they they didn't do it uh, the way they should. You know, they they made some mistakes. But it's not like they're going after somebody who's, uh, you know, going on to LimeWire or something like that and sharing files of, well, of music. But just remember, they have been shutting down sites the same exact way with uh, with the same rule for people oh, yeah, that are doing so I, but, yeah. but I agree with what you were saying. Is right, why right. don't they just take the, the, the normal legal route to do it yeah. instead of the government doing this? You know what? The government doesn't need to be worrying about who's stealing whose, you know, music files. They need to be going after physical victims, things like that. And if time permits, then go after those other things. But that's what the, the law is there for, you know, so any corporation, any individual could actually go to court and go through the legal system. Now, what's happening is, is some of these sites are immediately, you know, coming up on a different domain name. And what they're doing now to circumvent the rules is they're going and picking up domains that are outside the control of the U.S. government, basically controlled by a foreign government, and uh, coming up on those websites. There was actually an article out that talked about the domains that you would be safer under, but, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a U.S. citizen, you're going to come underneath the, uh, they're going to get you one way or the other, but, um, you know, it just goes into, okay, so now let's, let's, and I guess this kind of lead, maybe it will lead into a different topic. So let's say you've went and switched your website whatever you're doing, whether it be copyright materials or other type of insinuous type of activities, um, or let's say you've just moved your website to a different uh, dot something domain and uh, the country's in turmoil and the country decides to turn off the internet like Egypt did. Well, Libya, the dot L-Y, remember B-I-T dot L-Y, bit.ly? Well, Libya last night stopped their internet for six hours and uh, the .ly domain did not go down because there was at least two, uh, two of the servers were in the United States that actually um, keep the domain up and live and running. But here's the question. So what happens when that fanatic and weirdo Muammar Gaddafi, uh, which I can't believe this guy's still alive, um, you know, what happens when Bitly shuts down the Internet? And there was this uh, forum over at uh, Quora, and uh, so they, they this was over a good discussion about this. And, of course, all right, you got a great business. Millions, again, here we go, millions of links that you have your control of. It's one of these uh, silos again. You're talking about Apple at 30%. You're talking about uh, the folks over at... Um, Uh, Twitter, shutting off Uber Media. Now you've got your domain sitting on a country that's unstable. Uh, hmm. Is, is there, it looks like there's some lessons here <laughs> that we all can learn from. You know, uh, don't live in a foreign country. <laughs> well, not just that, but you know, everyone is becoming subdependent upon others to such an extent that. You know, at what point does we start to see fragmentation of the web because some country gets pissy? Tuvala, which is a country that's sinking um, because of uh, supposed global warming. We don't want to get into that topic. But, you know, here we have, you know, if, if, if the domain the registration servers had all been in Libya, uh, all these services that re require, you know, rely on that ly would have been shut down have you used bitly at all to redirect domains oh yeah definitely <laughs> it's been in you know my twitter links and uh i've used several different uh url shorteners but uh bitly of, of course so all those domains yeah, twitter it, use it use it all the time and and you know my my domain is drbill.tv that would be too well over there yeah, too, yeah. <laughs> so here we have all these sites that uh you know if someone decides they don't like you no more, and that's what has happened to a couple of .ly sites, Libya says, "Oh, that site is doesn't goes against the uh, the Muslim rule or you know some sort of Sharia stuff," and they've actually revoked domains because of religious reasons, and that uh, made the news a couple months ago, where some sites were pulled down, and I think one of them was uh, 
a glam some somebody was doing like some in well women's clothing and swimsuits or something like that and they they got yanked offline uh and that's you know and that's kind of the what the risk you run is you know we we've allowed countries to have their own you know domains and uh, they can do what they want with them you know you have to abide by the rules of the state or country that you are in no matter if you know them or not uh, you have to abide by them and uh, while we may not agree with everything that every other country you know believes in um, they are a religious state in in many respects uh, you have to deal with those laws and those customs and respect them. Uh, you don't have to like them, but you have to respect them. So maybe maybe it's better just to buy a .com, and uh, hopefully you don't become under the ire of ICE and Homeland Security. <laughs> I agree. I, I think, well, you know, .coms have been the first one and uh, the, the most common, and uh, that's what everybody thinks of, so... You know, the dot TVs and the, the LYs and, and everything else, the delicious and all that, uh, while they're, they're cool, I think they're, uh, they're unique. They definitely give you a, a, a spice and a difference uh, from everyone else. Uh, you run that risk of who actually owns the dot whatever. Yeah, I just uh, – so does it scare you? I, I don't think you have to worry about uh, tu Tuvalu or whatever the name of the country is. I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's – a small island nation out in the in the central or mid Pacific, I believe. They're probably loving it. That they, <laughs> they get money off of it. I mean, it's an income generator, and they do nothing. So, um, and and who's gonna yeah. who's gonna go and okay, it's a dot TV that that represents Tuvalu. Oh, they're bad people. No, they don't care. So, are you worried uh, worried, Bill, about your domain? Well, I was in a bit of a quandary. You know, I started out with thecomputercurmudgeon.com, which is a terribly Ooh, long domain. Yeah, it is. And um, I, I finally was able to acquire computercurmudgeon.com. That wasn't much better. Now, of course, both of those direct to my site still, um, but drbill.tv was just easier to deal with. It represented the video netcast. It was uh, it, and definitely easier for folks to pick up on and remember. So... Uh, it it kind of was a no-brainer to use it, but it's a whole other animal to have to think about these uh, these issues. I think you're right. I think Tuvalu is not one that I'm going to have to be too concerned about. <laughs> this is their natural national resource to have their domain where people <laughs> pay extra money oh, just yeah. for that. You know, I, have I mean, they they benefited greatly just with you know uh, getting a TV as their dot, and you know the fact that Americans and uh, the whole world loves television. You know, one thing I have Absolutely. to I have to laugh is that when uh, like when we're, we're getting ready to announce a couple of new services at Raw Voice, and the big challenge we always have is finding a name. So the first thing is, okay, that'll be a cool name, and you do a you do a trademark search. Oh, that's one you use. Can't use that. So then, you, you know, you find a name and then you go digging for the domain name or a variant of it. And it's become nearly impossible. So what we've done now and what I do for excitement, geek excitement for a Friday night is I go to GoDaddy's domain name sales and I actually go to expiring domains. And there's uh, hundreds and thousands of domains that expire every hour. So I'll just sit here and I'll hit refresh and I'll go through the list. I say, oh yeah, there's, and you can buy them now for, you know, two, three bucks. And I'll go through the list, go through the list, go through the list, or I'll do keyword searches, look for ones that are expiring or for sale. I'm finding more domains. Boy, oh boy, I shouldn't even tell this, but I'm finding more and more good domains now by looking for domains that are either just about to expire or are for sale. Um, in their listings, it basically tells you how much time is left before the domain. And what I think what GoDaddy has done, and I don't can't prove it or not, but I think if they take anyone that has a domain that's getting ready to die, if you've got a domain that's going to die, I almost the way it looks, it looks like they bring those up in the for sale category a couple of days uh, beforehand. Now, if, if they've got these rules, if you buy it and it expires and of course, as a domain owner, you can renew after so much time, even after expired, to get your domain back. And you know, I think it's 14 days. You have to wait for the domain to clear. But uh, that's how I'm finding domains now. When I'm going looking for domains, I'm looking for I'm going into the auction sites and start finding stuff I can pay five bucks for, as a you know, as a way as a buy now versus 
sitting and doing keyword searches and you know because the if you try to put two real words together none of those are left they're gone you, you can you can use the most ridiculous uh zebra um whatever you know or you know use the most obscure word that's in the dictionary they're gone oh yeah there's the you know i when i was looking for totally cool tech i was lucky and it, kind of like bill was saying it's you know it's kind of a long one um but I also try to get you know as short a one as possible to keep them together and associate them in whatever. I even went out and bought you know a dot TV. Haven't really used it yet, but I you know I, I plan on it. Yeah. And to go and find some, uh, I actually stumbled upon one that uh, I'm not going to mention it. Um, I haven't used yet. I would love to. Uh, just don't know if I can find the time or the, you know uh, the material to, to to get onto it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. You, you go on here and you're looking for something. You got a really good idea, and man, someone has got it. And half the time, I've noticed it has nothing to do with what you want to do. And you're like, oh, that, you know, that, that's an old site. It hasn't been updated in four years. Or you know, it's, it's or just it's sitting parked. there. It's parked. Yeah, and, and then you. Yeah. You, so and many times too, I if I see a park domain that's for sale, um, I go over to Gmail. I create a dummy gmail account one that i can throw away that uh, doesn't indicate who i am because you know the first thing the guys are going to do if you try to buy a domain from them they're going to go all right who's geek news at gmail.com and they're going to search that and they're going to find out oh this is uh this is todd oh what does he do and the next thing is oh yeah he can afford five thousand dollars instead of five hundred and so that's been my strategy in buying domains is i never ever try to reveal who i am in the domain purchase um so essentially i set up a dummy gmail account and say okay i'll offer you 500 bucks on that and at the point where they agree then i come in with the the real persona and make the purchase but um you know that's that's something you have to you know it's just a little trick i've used in buying domains and i think the most i've ever paid for a domain is 500 bucks but it's been for something that we needed and I know you can spend a lot more money on domains across the board if you, you know, <laughs> you know, you look at some of them, they're crazy price, but. Uh, oh, definitely. I've, I've run that, uh, that before where, you know, you're looking for a specific domain you want or something close to it. Somebody's got it. They want three to $5,000 and yep. you're like, you're kidding me. It's, it's not worth that. You uh, know, often if you even make... if I can make, even I, even if I can make a million off of it uh, and, and potentially a million, you know. Do I really want to spend three to five thousand? Where maybe if I do get it, uh, it it folds. It doesn't do anything. You know. To be honest with you, most of those domains that they have three thousand dollars on there, they put that on there because they can. And oftentimes the, those guys are sitting on a you know a hundred thousand domain names, and if you throw them a reasonable offer, um, you know, and I generally don't offer any more than two three hundred bucks on the first go round. Uh, sometimes a bite. Sometimes you'll get them. Sometimes you won't. Hey, let's go ahead and switch topics here. We've talked about Bitly. We've talked about uh, Apple and their 30% uh, mafia tactics. And, of course, to Twitter demanding you play or you don't. You, you, you basically play by our rules or you don't play. Um, I'm sure most of you, most, do both of you guys have Netflix accounts? Do you guys get Netflix subscriptions? Yes. Netflix yeah, account, Netflix Roku, and everything. Roku box. How many of you uh, ever rent from those Redbox? You ever pick a video up at Redbox? I haven't, but uh, there's been times where, yeah, I would like to do that. We we uh, have a uh, little, it's basically a little mini mart or a little shopping place. It's about a mile and a half from where we live down the hill. And they've got one of these red boxes sitting outside, and every once in a while we'll see what they have. They're usually empty because people have raided them already by the time I get there. <laughs> But Redbox announced that they're planning a Netflix-like subscription streaming movie service. And they may be par partnering with Amazon or Walmart. And um, so it, here we go. You know, we've got uh, the late to the party. But uh, if they can actually team up with Walmart, um, Netflix is going to have some uh, going to have their hands full because uh, Walmart's the another 500-pound gorilla. And if they actually make that happen, I think they've got a chance of succeeding. Um, with the but Walmart already yeah. has their own streaming service I, that do, they, that they, they do? purchased. 
<laughs> I haven't heard. They do? <laughs> I, yeah, they bought someone out. I forget who it was. Um, uh, I, obviously, I, you know, if they, but they did. Haven't been, obviously, they haven't been doing much with it. But how are they going to do it with Amazon? I don't understand that. Amazon has their own, you know, service on the Roku. Maybe it's going to be a partnership type deal. And, you know, Amazon doesn't have distribution on the street. But your Redbox does, so you that know. I can see. You if know. they're if they're teaming up yeah. that way, I can see that it definitely uh, enhances both you know revenue streams. Yeah. So yeah, it, and I think uh, you know one thing too is is competition is usually good. I yeah. mean, uh, it'll keep Netflix prices down, uh, which is good for us <laughs> as Netflix customers. Definitely, and uh, you know. Uh, and add innovation. You know, maybe Redbox coming into the market will uh, will cause Netflix to release some new innovation that we haven't even thought of yet. Well, one thing it's been a challenge for Netflix is they have become under the they are all the movie industry is laser focused on them. They're you know they're kind of like the evil empire as compared to iTunes is on pricing and stuff. So now that they're starting to make money, you know, then the movie theaters are like, oh well, I can go ask for more cash. And to distribute our content, and when basically when that starts, that stuff starts to come into effect, then we could see our Netflix subscription going up in price. It already did; I think it went up a buck this year. This year because of some of those pressures. So, with more competitors in the market, then it gives the movie theaters more, our movie industry more choices on partners, and we could end up with, uh, hopefully, not fragmented, but hopefully a a um, less pressure on Netflix from a subscription standpoint. It's a pretty cool uh, announcement by Redbox. We'll see if it actually happens. I look forward to that. I would like to be able to see something to that effect going on. Um, like you said, at your local uh, store there, we have one at our local uh, Mega Mart. And uh, there's even one, uh, I think I've got one about a mile away, one about two miles away. So they're, they're pretty much everywhere around here. Uh, to be able to get it streaming, to be able to get the power and purchasing of, say, Walmart or Amazon behind that, that makes it just that much better. Now, Miss Smallbiz says, I like Netflix, but not being able to download for offline viewing is nearly a deal breaker. And for some, you know, even when I travel, I wish I could download stuff, start it to download and, and be able to watch it later. Um, but, you know, I think that's, she's got a good point there. But again, I doubt that we're ever going to see that specifically because of DRM and people stealing movies. And, uh, you know, the honest people are honest, but those that want to rip stuff are, are not, you know they're going to continue to do it and share it up on peer to peer. So uh, I don't I don't know if that uh, if it'll ever happen where we're able to download it. Now Amazon, I was those media files when Amazon. I don't even know if Amazon Unbox is still available, but I was using Amazon M Unbox to get like Battlestar Galactica um, season. You know I'd get the whole season and actually download it and I could watch it remotely, but. Uh, um, I don't know if they're the only ones that do that or not. I know it was tightly tied to my account. So No, I, I, ha I haven't used that. Um, I would like that ability to go ahead and download, save it, and watch it when I want. Even if it was basically set to where I can watch it, and then once I'm done, it's gone. That's it. You get a one-time use. That wouldn't be bad. It was kind of like the what was the old Divix where you go ahead and you rent the CD or the DVD and you play it and it basically kills itself. Um, that wouldn't even be bad. So, you know, this whole digital delivery is obviously impacting folks, and we've seen uh, this a week, the announcement of Borders filing for bankruptcy, going to close 200 stores. I think we've got six Borders here in Honolulu. When was the last time you guys were in a Borders? Bill, when was the last time you were in a Borders? Uh, I'd say it's been over a year, easily over a year. Um, and uh, I used to, a friend of mine and I used to meet at Borders and, uh, get a cup of coffee and, and talk. Haven't even done that in a long time. So, um, it's a shame that it's happening, but, uh, and the pressure is in the bookstore arena, you know, for, particularly for a small mom and pop shop. Uh, you know, they were adversely affected by the Borders and the, Barnes and Nobles and all the big stores, and now the pressure is coming against the big stores. So, um, I think electronic delivery is is what's affecting all of this. You know, if I can sit at home and and uh, watch it over my Kindle, if it's if it's reading material or 
my Roku box, if it's video or audio, um, it changes the field. You know, it, our bookstore is going to be like buggy whips. Are they going to go out of business? Totally. Well, how about you, Norbert? Uh, when was the last time you were in Borders? It was about two months ago. It was back during Christmas. And, it, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of, as Bill was saying, how the, you know, the, these big box uh, bookstores killed the mom and pop shops, you know, back, like in uh, you know, You've Got Mail. Well, now it's the internet is killing the big box <laughs> shops, you know? Sorry, yeah. it's like you don't, you don't have inter- you don't have email anymore. You know, we've taken it away. Um, it is the, the 800 pound gorilla now. You know, well, it's it's it goes back to what co- goes around comes around, you know. So, you know, the mom and pop screamed about the, you know, the big boxes, and then now the big boxes are screaming about digital. The problem is, is they were just too slow to move digital, and Amazon ate them, ate their lunch, and that, uh, that's completely right. <laughs> I mean, you want you want entertainment, and the bookstores used to give you, you know, the entertainment in in a written form. Uh, then they found that, you know, well, they want audio too, and then they want video as well. Well, we can do that. They were late getting onto that bandwagon, and then they were late getting onto the digital bandwagon. So, so, so they, you know, it, it, it's the survival of the fittest, and can they reorganize and uh, innovate to meet the challenge? Well, let's, let's look at the crystal ball then. So we've had big boxes kill mom and pop shops. Same like Walmart has decimated millions of small businesses throughout America. You know, it's, they've been responsible for the decimation of many thousands and th- hundreds of thousands of small businesses. So we've had, you know, essentially the same thing happen in that part of the world or, you know, that business model. So you've got bookstores being killed by borders, borders killed by Amazon or digital. Where, what's the competitor for Amazon? What's the competitor? Does it does it switch now to where publishers find a way to basically tell Amazon? I'm not see Amazon takes a pretty big cut on book sales. Would uh, is what's what's Amazon's threat? It's Apple. <laughs> it's Apple. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, think about it. Not only are they carrying the content, they're delivering it to you on their product. I mean, yeah, yes, Amazon has the Kindle, but Apple has the iPod, the iPad, the MacBooks. Um, what else is going to be coming out? You know, it, it, Apple has the whole model. Yeah. The only thing they're not doing is creating their own content. Gosh, what a model. That's the only thing they're not doing. <laughs> mm. So, Dr. Bill, what uh what do you think? What's the what's Amazon? Is 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 it, is it Apple that's or Android or Google that's uh Amazon's competition? I'd say Google if if I had to if I had to identify anybody at the moment, I think they have the the most potential to be an end-to-end delivery model. Uh they're already uh, trying to do more with the uh, the books and and uh, um, being able to provide that over uh, the Google Reader and and uh, you know we'll we'll see what's going to happen. I think the big thing if if the market keeps changing, I think it's changing toward mobile devices. And if you've got a good solid mobile device, whether it's a phone or handheld or tablet or whatever, it's going to end up being. Uh, and you have delivery over that, that's going to be really where you're going to want to jump in the future. Uh, you were talking about some of the people being slow to to pick up on the Internet, um, and it, it ended up killing their business. The same thing I think is going to be true with mobile devices. If they don't take that seriously, they're going to they're gonna lose market. You look that's at, true. And you look at how fast this has happened. You know, it used to take decades to upsert businesses. And now... You know, you, you, if you just even go back and look at the history of the telephone, how long it took the telephone to replace the telegraph, and then basically the you know radio, uh, TV replacing radio. So we started this evolution in digital take up back in about where it really started to impact business heavily was in 2003 when you guys remember Warehouse Music? You guys remember that company? Oh, yeah. Right, so yep, yep. Th- they were the first one really to be slaughtered, and it was largely because of the peer-to-peer stuff and what was going on with Napster at the time. 
And then in the UK, um, I think it was H HMV was one of the stores that got started getting whacked. But, you know, Tower Records and we've got Borders and we've got Blockbuster and we've got, you know, on and on and on. Um, these companies being these brick and mortars that were national institutions really gone. And uh, Circuit City, you look at uh, them, they were, you know, it's even happened in the electronics market. Now, in Hawaii, I don't order too many consumer electronics like TVs and that type of stuff online. I'll buy the small stuff, you know, like the Rokus and the, and the boxies and so forth. But um, in the, if I was living in the lower 48 because shipping costs are lower, I would be absolutely buying probably 99.9% .9 of the stuff online. Now, what do you guys... Are you guys doing that yourself? Or is is that what next is is uh, Best Buy on the next chopping block? It could be. I mean, they do have yeah. a good online shopping. You can purchase and then they can deliver. Uh, just how well will it be done? Will they keep up with the pace of everything? Will they be using local shippers? Will they be using you know regional warehouses or a a, uh, a main warehouse? What's their distribution? Are they going to own the distribution or are they going to use private distribution? Yeah, I do most everything online. I mean, I think uh, groceries, uh, gas for the car, that's about the only thing that we buy locally. Everything else is, is online these days. It's just more convenient. I'm connected to the net all the time. So I can literally just stop what I'm doing for a second, order something, and know that in a couple of days it's going to show up at my door. <laughs> Great. So, uh, what what could be more convenient than that? Well, probably it's a uh, time to double down and buy stock in FedEx and UPS. They definitely are not going out of business anytime soon. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> definitely, that's that's for sure. And I've actually found that uh, the United States Postal Service could be quicker than either of those two in certain occasions, and it's been actually pretty good. Uh, when I ship my stuff from uh, here from Elk Grove down to San Diego to my sister, you know, it's cheaper. And it's just as fast with the Postal Service than it is with, say, UPS. So depending on uh, the distribution service that the, uh, the companies use, it could be quite lucrative to them. I know I use, uh, I hate to admit it, you know, Newegg a lot. And they use different shipping services you know, to meet the need of what they need to do. You know, if they want to give you a free shipping, right. uh, they're going to use the cheapest thing they can get. But if they want to get it to you quick, they might use two different services. I've actually seen it where DHL and the UP, uh, the United States Postal Service are actually teamed up. And now I believe that even UPS has teamed up with the United States Postal Service where they'll deliver it part the way and then the Postal Service will deliver it to your home from the, the local uh, mail house that they have. You know, I, this is my one of my favorite stories. Uh, not this year. Uh, two, in December of 2000, and we lost Bill again. December of 2009, I was looking for, as a matter of fact, it, believe it or not, I have it setting here on my desk. In December of 2009, I was looking for um, a, something that looks like this. And all it is is just a shoe that goes on a camera with another little mount. Okay, so I was looking online and I. I was finding these at uh, B and H and at photo stores for like thirty bucks, and I said that's just ridiculous. They, these do not cost thirty dollars. So I went on yeah. eBay, and I found the same exact thing for was it three dollars? I think I found it three dollars. I said, oh my gosh, three bucks. Let me order, you know, order five, and or five or six. I ordered five or six, and. Uh, um, it went to pay and it said, uh, these are coming out of Hong Kong. And I'm like, oh man, these are going to, the shipping is going to kill me. And, uh, believe it or not, the shipping was cheaper than if I had bought one unit from the B&H, paid their shipping to get it in here. I think I paid th three or $4. It was really low on the shipping and I was flabbergasted that I could actually get something shipped from Hong Kong, purchased cheaper than I could from a B and H or one of these other companies. Um, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't surprise me, Todd, because they're lower overhead over there. 
because they don't. Well, not have necessarily these in Hong, not necessarily in Hong Kong. In China, yes, but Hong Kong True. is still pretty expensive. But yeah, in definitely in China, uh, much cheaper. But the closer you're buying it from the actual manufacturer, the cheaper it's going to be, no matter what, because B and H had to ship it to their place, so you had to pay that shipping charge when you ship when they ship to you. You're paying for what they paid uh, to get it to them and then to send it to you. Right. Well, that's that's one reason it's good to shop and why shopping online can be uh, so beneficial in saving money. I mean, I'm the same thing. I've got this little little device here. If you can see it, it's it's a hot shoe converter that converts to uh, a uh, tripod right. mount. And that, I mean, you know this little old thing cannot be a lot in terms of, of expense to make. I was seeing these online for $25 at some sites. I ended up paying a dollar fifty for it by just shopping, looking at different sites, not taking the first thing that I saw. And uh, I actually ended up getting two or three <laughs> at that price and feeling like, wow, you know, I've saved a ton of money. The shipping actually costs more than the product <laughs> just to get it. It's funny. It, but, uh... And that, that's, that's smart shopping right there. If you don't need it right now, you can take that time. But it's when I yeah. need it right now. Yeah. And America has become that I need it right now. You know, I see but, it in my six-year-old. I mean, everything's got to be immediate because that's how it is these days. But everything to Hawaii is three or four days, and this was three or four days. So I really didn't wait any longer than I would have from a U.S. manufacturer. So, yeah. yeah but I'm in a unique well, the, location, the too. The other side of that uh, thought, too, <laughs> Norbert, is uh, Americans want it immediately, and I understand that. But these days, the bottom line is is money, the yeah. cost. Uh, and oh. Definitely. If it's the you know, if it's the difference in this case of 20 some dollars or a dollar, um, that's worthwhile. It's worth my time. Now, I really do occasionally think, you know, how much time do I want to spend chasing all around to find something just to maybe get it a dollar cheaper? Uh, that's like my wife. She'll drive all around town to save on a dollar coupon. <laughs> no. Y your wife doesn't do that. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. I, I've seen that. It's like, why do I want to drive all the way across town to save a buck and a half? Hey, it's, when I can it's, go down the street, it's spend in, less, get it just, you know. It's in their DNA. Just, you know, that's. Well, we, yeah. <laughs> and it makes her feel good. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, so let me, let me share something with you guys. And uh, I've talked about this several times, not necessarily in this show, but as we were walking through CES, Sony, Panasonic, LG. Samsung. So when you think of Samsung, you think of Korea products. You think of LG, you think of Korea. You think of Sony, you think of Japan. You think of what company, you know, Apple, America, okay, but still made in China. But anyway, long story yeah, short. Gone. Yeah, so long story short, you've got these brands that are associated with all these specific countries. What brand, what national brand is associated with China. Well, Foxconn comes to mind because they but, make uh, Apple's products. Okay, and but, they also have but, their own but, line but, of PCs. But, but they don't really... Okay, they, they've got their own line of PCs now? Yeah. Um, matter of fact, my wife's PC is one of those Foxconn's... Norbert was talking earlier about Newegg. We got it from Newegg. It's a very small form factor, almost like a bookend sized pc and right. uh, it was a bare bone system and then i built you know put everything into it that she needed but uh it's technically a foxconn brand and they're beginning to use that brand more and more now i don't think anybody associates it with china right 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 it comes from china so what is i've what i've said is the really the challenge the chinese have if they really want to eat all these companies lunch first of all we just have to face the fact they're going to pollute they're going to have used child labor. They're going to pay them nothing, slave wages, and guess what? Americans are going to buy this stuff. That's just a fact. That's how, you know, as much people say we don't want this to happen, that's what's going to happen. They're, we're already doing it. Uh, you know, the Apple's been accused of having, you know, labor issues with their workers and not getting paid enough and, you know, extreme working conditions. You know, this has been going on since, you know, this happened in the United States before unions got involved in, in our mass manufacturing process. So we're, we've been guilty of it as a country too. So long story short, what China is missing 
is a national brand. And if China ever figures this out and can come up with some sort of national brand or some sort of brand that people can recognize when they walk into a Best Buy, first of all, they've stole everything that we've sent over there. So all of the Apple's technology, anyone that had anything built over there, you can absolutely be guaranteed that technology has been stole. GE had to give up technology to give in there to do power generation. It just goes on and on and on. You know, they're, obviously they're they're educating people here in the United States and going back over there and using that knowledge. But let's just be honest. They could really cause even more impact negatively on our economy other or other countries' economy if they have their own brand. And uh but yet we have all this free trade. <laughs> so I'm just wondering when that's going to happen. Maybe it won't. And maybe they're satisfied with building people other stuff. But I would just think that they'd have their own brand at some point. I think, actually, you know, if you think about it, everything is manufactured in China. True. So just about everything my kids yeah. play with, you know, that's a Chinese product. You but, know, but it's got been designed, it's, it's, it may have been designed here in America, right. um, but it was built somewhere else, put together somewhere else, and then shipped over here. So it's a Chinese product. I mean, I mean, you, you always see it made in China. That's their brand, made but in China. It, but at the same point, it's still you, people know it's made in China, but it's they still think it's a, it's Sony or it's LG or it's Samsung or whoever. I I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but. Uh, um, I think they could have a bigger financial impact by coming up with their own national brand. But if you, you're, gone, you're we'll right see. There, but who's who's going to do it? Is it going to be the the Chinese government, or is it going to be a? I guess Fox they could gone. have a private. You know, yeah, is it going to be a private company that's going to do it? And what is it going to be? It's not going to be just one thing, unless it's going to be a mega, you know, right. corporation, a conglomerate that that owns a bunch of these smaller little things and has their one big name on it and does everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, GE they do everything from uh, MRIs to uh, yep. generators to satellites. I mean, they do everything. Right. So, you know, it it could be something like that, possibly. Yeah. Very well, if they introduce a, a brand, I think they're going to have to kind of clean up their act a little bit uh, in terms of, of identification of that brand. If people right. realize it's China and everything that's going on in China, and like you said, the child labor and maybe, the maybe it's, uh, maybe it's not their time been yet. In the news with uh, uh, suicides, you know, that's one thing Apple is uh, is fighting is that perception that wow, these people are over there under such pressure that are making our products, they're committing suicide. Uh, you got to clean up that act. <laughs> well, maybe it's that's uh, maybe that's the reason why that it's not time yet. So let's yeah. let's move topics here. Let's talk. Did you guys uh, switch? You guys both have iPhones, or have you guys droids, or what have you got? I have the the droid. I have uh, the Droid X, and I'm actually looking at getting my wife the the I, Apple iPhone from the Verizon store. Bill, what are you what are you running? Uh, Droid X, same thing. Matter of fact, my son and I both have the Droid X and, and absolutely love it. The Android operating system has been awesome. Well, I tell you, the more and more I think about it, the more I'm thinking about switching to Droid. But let's talk about Verizon and AT&T and the heads-up battle that you knew occurred this week. Verizon uh, has got a great network for voice, but boy, oh, boy, it sure sucks for uh, speed. Um, they've done some nationwide speed test reporting, and uh, AT&T whipped up all over them. Uh, the speed of the AT&T phone was almost double that of Verizon, and I think a lot of people are standing around scratching their their chins a little bit. Now, I'm not surprised about this because, obviously, this is not a phone that's running on LTE and uh, it's using, you know, CDMA stuff. Um, any thoughts on, you know, does that, and they're admitting that there's slower take-up of the Verizon iPhone, so could this be? Well, it's, well I think I a lot of people... Odd. I find it odd that 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 is the case. Uh, whoops, lost me. We again. lost you again. So Norbert, any you know, I, I I think <laughs> that with Apple, you know, and and the AT and T version, yeah, you have a faster speed. Uh, I would say I would have to say a better technology in that one. Your coverage is less. I mean, it's like yeah, you can go faster, 
but only if you live here, here, here with Verizon. Okay, we don't go as fast, but you can get us almost <laughs> everywhere. Almost so everywhere. what's what's the well, balance there? That's what I was you know? going to say is that you know everybody that I hear that has AT and T, it's as soon as the iPhone came out on Verizon, I said, "Wow, I can have the same phone and actually be able to make a call." <laughs> <laughs> so keep, you know, keep the call. I don't understand the, how they can get these speed tests and and make it look so good. <laughs> you know, I have to well, laugh. One thing that I am going to. Uh, not like is the fact that with the Verizon version, you cannot use voice and data at the same right. time. Well, that's true. AT&T, you that's can. True. So right now, that's where AT&T has the advantage. They have, you know, speed in limited areas, higher speed in limited areas, and they can you can do both at the same time. Once Verizon gets LTE working, that's it. It's going to be game over yeah. unless AT&T really gets their 4G up and flying. And they should both, both teams should be getting that higher speed, can do both everything at the same time. You know, will it be iPhone 5? It's, uh, it'll be, it'll be uh, interesting to see how this all washes out. But um, definitely I, I don't think that Verizon got the biggest, as big a bounce as they, as they thought they would. I want to switch topics here to kind of security for a couple of seconds. Uh, we've got about nine minutes, but I want to wrap this up for you guys to so get you out of here at the 90 minute mark. But the have you guys heard about this Westboro Baptist Church? These are these guys that go around and uh, go after service members after they've been uh, you know brought home and the funerals and they're doing all kinds. They've done some pretty nasty stuff over the years. You guys heard about these guys? Yeah, they're protesting oh, yeah. the uh, the burials, the funerals, and right, all that. Right, right, right. I, I think that's uh, that's un-American. Well, let's because those guys died for those people's ability to protest. Here's something very interesting. You know, Anonymous, that group Anonymous, you guys been following what they've been up to and that shenanigans that happened with that one security company? A little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make a long story short, Anonymous is a group of uh, unnamed internet activists and uh, they've been pretty effective in penetrating and bringing sites down to a crawl. They sent a letter to the Westboro Baptist Church that basically says uh, this letter, rather than allowing the deceased some degree of peace and respect, you, WBC, instead choose to torrent, harass, and assault those who grieve after chastising the WBC for preaching your, whatever it is here, hatred and deploying tactics and methods of intimidation, Anonymous is making it clear that the church will soon be a target of an attack. Anonymous is a formidable group of aggressive hackers and hacktivists that can back up their threats. So here we've got a group that, to all extents, is you don't want to be on the wrong side of these guys. And at this point, they've been not going after, they're going after companies, and they've had a number of campaigns that they've done. But this is the first time they are, and I hate to kind of say it, <laughs> Because, you know, you don't want to condone hacking activities, but boy, oh boy, this is the first time I'm almost like, go get them. Um, they're, they're electronic <laughs> vigilantes. I mean, what kind of, and, and, and what kind of presence does Westboro Baptist Church have on the net? I have I mean, no idea. <laughs> do, do they have a website? I, I, don't I, I don't know, but they say that they are basically going to go after these guys in a big, big way. And... Um, I wonder if somebody in that anonymous community had a family member Maybe. or friend yep. that was mm. in the military and they got, you know, harassed, their family got harassed. Yeah. And this is the, maybe their only way of doing it. And maybe it's not a big hit to the, the church, but uh, they're doing what they can and they can do a lot of damage. Now, if you guys haven't read this, you, you got to go and read the background on what the anonymous versus H.B. Gary. You got to go read the story. I've got a link uh, to. I made it. I basically only got a, like you guys. I kind of did a taste of the article. Then I talked about it on my show, and I got man. I got some emails. And, man, you, you got it all wrong. You need to go here and read. And I went and read this uh, the whole story and background between anonymous going after H.B. Gary. You, I'm telling you, this is a story that'll sit you back and make you really think. The H.B. Gary folks, and the CEO at H.B. Gary, oh, my God, scary, crazy, should be fired. Um, wow. 
is all I can say. And some of the shenanigans that they're pulling, basically what happened is Anonymous, well, I can't go into the full story. We spent a whole half hour on it. But <laughs> Anonymous went in and got everything out of their servers, their email, uh, defaced their website, downloaded code, all kinds of crazy stuff. All I can say is I, what they were doing and suggesting that they were going to do for like the U.S. Chamber Commerce and a whole bunch of other organizations makes you really sit back and say, what is going on in business? And it's some, it's a story that will astound you. So just when you guys get done and those of you that are listening online or watching the show, just Google anonymous slash HB Gary or just HB Gary. And there was a good article, I think, by the best one I read was over at Ars Technica, I think. And uh, you'll be blown away. But I'll be honest with you, if anonymous goes after this Westboro Baptist Church, if they have any type of online presence, it will not exist after they're done with them. I can yeah. believe that. <laughs> well, are, are, is Anonymous the group that went after the Scientology uh, yeah, folks? Yeah, I, I think, so. think, it's, I think it's the same group. Yeah. So. And, and Scientology is big in terms of finances and backing and everything else, and yet they were able to take them on. So I don't think a, a little wacko church out in the middle of nowhere is going to have any chance against them. No, yeah. not at all. Absolutely. <laughs> Take um, them off the digital map. Yeah. A any of you got SSD drives in your computers? Uh, don't I wish? <laughs> uh, I do in my work laptop. Well, I'm waiting to purchase one. I'm trying to get that deal that you guys know that we've got on tap to go through. But here's something to think about. There's a pretty good article about SSD drives, and, and basically they're not able, and they have found that even if you use – put a piece of data on an SSD drive and you use some of the more secure and robust uh, rewrite features where you, if you want to get rid of that content on there, um, they're saying that confidential data is not safe on current solid state disk. Uh, basically, and of course, it's going to take a forensic guy to go in and pull the stuff out. But um, if you're really worried about your content, and most people wouldn't be, but if I was a business or anything like that, um, you may question whether you want to put any data on SSDs. Wow, it's interesting. I can see why uh where the standard DOD wipe uh on a magnetic hard drive is definitely going to uh make it to where you could not even forensically reconstruct what what's on there. Uh with a solid state drive, yeah, I could see where there could be a fingerprint left of the data then someone if they're you know, technically savvy enough, could get that data off no matter what you've done to it. Yeah, the researchers at UCSD, uh, University of California Davis, I guess. Uh, UCSD, uh, University of California, San Diego. Okay, San Diego. They tore apart some SSDs and they found remnant data after running uh, several open source and commercial secure race tools. So they've uh, proposed some changes to SSD, but as Ms. Smallbiz did, so if you're using an SSD, you need to be doing a full disk encryption. I don't like that because it slows the drives down. But uh, um, if you're going to be storing data on those, maybe something you want to. Now, I'll be honest with you. Depends I'm, on the valuability of that data. You know, it, you know what what data is on there, and if it's on an SSD, uh, and it's that valuable, would you want it on a laptop? No, one day. I don't think so. One day a year, we have a hammer day at Cochrane House, and that's where I have a <laughs> I have a metal plate that's about that thick. I take it out in the a driveway and I, I put the metal plate down and I give the kids sledgehammers and hammers and safety glasses and uh, whatever hard drives I've had that have uh, spun their disc that year, I put those on there and then I let them at it. And uh, the kids have a great time. They they get their, their energy out and they destroy these things, the smithereens. I'm going to tell you, that's the only way. <laughs> That's that's true. Yeah. Physical, physically destroying it, um, and and that was shown in Terminator. Uh, you know when we had uh, Arnold going ahead and melting himself. That's that, uh, or yeah. being melted. Couldn't melt himself, but uh, that does sound like a lot of fun. Do. And I, Imagine all of the, the frustration you have when your computer crashes. You say, "I'm gonna get you." And the first year I, I did take it, it out of the hammer. That. I've done it. Hammers and drills, everything. You know, you know? the first year we did it, I had, <laughs> I had like five years worth of stuff, you know. And uh, so, you know, like we, we, tool. Oh, we had a great time. And I, I had a, you know, a regular five-pound sledge. So, I, you know, I'll tell my son, okay, over the top, you know. So he comes over the top on this thing, you know. <laughs> 
That's the way to do <laughs> so, it. So, but use safety glasses because stuff flies everywhere. Well, oh, guys, definitely. Uh, well, guys, we're we're in an hour and a half, and of course, I want to pimp your guys' shows here. So, if everyone wants to check out some cool shows, you want to check out Norbert's show over at Totally Cool Tech Podcast. And well, yeah, I see you still got our our stream up there, Norbert. Uh, you may want to yeah. <laughs> you got to update your site. <laughs> I know, uh, I know. I'm actually having. Uh, uh, if you if if you don't if you hadn't noticed, uh, I, I am going to be. Uh, doing a change on the, the logo there. I had uh, Paul Muller from Caffeination. He's, he's done my graphics and my logo and all that. So I've got some new ones. I just have to get them on there. Cool. So are you still, are you doing dailies or what are you doing now? Uh, no, I, I, I am only doing right now. It's weekly. Uh, I'm trying to get back to biweekly. Uh, I did daily for a little over a year. and uh, That's hard. That was hard. That was, yeah, Monday through Friday. That was very hard. But uh, doing it as doing twice a week for a year, and then now I'm uh, I'm at once a week, and hopefully to get back at twice a week. You know, Andy did uh, five days a week for five years, and it no wonder it just get oh, killed yeah. him. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I, just, I can't. I can't. I, I don't know how he did it. I don't know either. So, Doctor Bill, you're at Doctor Bill dot Doctor Bill dot TV. So, what's your publishing schedule? And yeah, I I try to do uh, a, a program every Saturday. It usually is out by Sunday. Uh, so once a week at this point, and, uh, of course, if you click on our blog link there at the top, that'll take you to drbill.cc, CC for computer curmudgeon, a little creative use of the, uh, yeah. the URL there. Uh, but that's where I do my blogging and, and basically the video show is a little kind of synopsis of what I've been blogging about, uh, you know, during the prior week. So that's how I put the show together. Well, I hope you guys had a good time and uh, enjoyed the the new company today. It was good. Some new, you know, basically some new feedback. You know, I get Rob on here, and I want to talk about Apple, and Rob has to kind of bite his lip because, you know, he works for Zoom, so he can't say too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, been a great, it's been a great show. So I appreciate you guys I coming really appreciate out. appreciate it. And uh, for appreciate those of you. the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that are part of the audience, if you have comments on today's show, you can send them to uh, geeknews at gmail.com. That'll get it to me. I think I've got another email set up, but I forget what it is, so I always remember my primary one. Just uh, subject to uh, the morning show or something like that. That way I'll put it in a separate bit bucket for the show. But uh, thanks, guys. And uh, for the rest of the viewing audience, check my shows out at geeknewscentral.com. Of course, every Tuesday and Friday is when the shows are released. I'm live Monday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time, that's 10 p.m. Pacific or 1 a.m. Eastern. And, of course, we do the morning show uh, every Saturday that I am home. It starts at 9 a.m. Pacific or 12 noon Eastern. When the time switches, guys, I'll be back to a 6 a.m. start. So I'm actually uh, not looking for the end of daylight savings time. I know we're a ways away from that yet, but we go back to six hours because we don't change our clocks here in Hawaii. We go. So I'm actually... Uh, one, I get an extra hour of sleep, uh, but uh, we'll see how it goes when we flip the clocks back. No problem. So, Dr. Everybody. Bill, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Glad I could join you guys today and uh, a lot of interesting topics. Appreciate it. And I'm, I'm, great. I'm sorry you were cutting out. We'll have to figure out what's going on yeah, there. I don't but, know what's uh, happening there. I have, to, I have to look over my system here see what's happening. <laughs> So everyone else, I think it was the mouse, Doctor Bill. You got to keep that thing moving. Yeah, I just I keep moving it. Yeah. <laughs> so and uh, yeah, thanks for the comments on the lights. Yes, we have worked very hard at the lights here, and the lights I'm very happy with now. So I like I like the neon in the back. Is it a <laughs> uh, uh, is it a pencil, a grease pencil, or something? Yeah, it's actually I'm holding the pen that uses it. Basically, is paint I think, and it's one color, and you can change the it's a little switch on the side. You can change the color on the uh, thing. My wife has promised to do some artwork for me. We were supposed to change that up every show, but uh, she hasn't gotten to it yet. So it's just like anything else. We're busy. But uh, let me go ahead and pull the plug here. And everyone that's been on, thanks so very much. If you guys want to hang and talk for a few seconds, we can do that. But I'm going to start the recording until next Saturday. We'll see you later. Take care and aloha.